Hey guys, I wanted to make another follow-up video to my last video. In my last video, I showed you how you can input data using your uh, different sensors that are in your PCM, such as your uh, EGR sensor, your fuel pressure tank, or excuse me, fuel tank pressure sensor, or AC air conditioner pressure sensor. Uh, in this video, I just kind of want to show you how you can use uh, the input input data say in this case I use my EGR sensor for my wideband and uh, what that allows me to do is to to log data with my wideband and use that data to tune with now to me this is the only way to really to tune a vehicle properly is with the wideband I, I mean uh, it's just uh, the most accurate way to do it in my opinion and it, it's the most uh, safest way too if you if you go about it uh, kind of using your head a little bit so to do this so uh, as far as these channels go I mean, I'm gonna shut this this log off real quick so I can follow along with how I do it uh, close log you want to add a channel for air fuel ratio required. Air fuel ratio commanded is what it says. So it's your double click that. There it is. And you want to have at least the uh, input that you're using for your your gauge uh, for your wideband. In my case, I'm using the EGR sensor. Now I'm open this log file back up. Okay, I want to show you how this works. Okay, you'll notice that your air fuel ratio commanded has a value beside it. And as you play your log, this value kind of changes whenever your uh, engine load uh, demands change. So, for example, if you go to this area here, you can see that at this point it changed from a 14.68 to 11.57 throttle position sensors wide open uh, rpm ranges are up map is at this point which is approximately eight eight and a half pounds of boost so at this point it's telling the the pcm is telling uh, the injectors and everything else that hey we're, we're shooting for this for air fuel ratio well, since you have your gauge now set up, you can see right here, we don't quite have that. You're close. In this case, it's 11.0. So there is a difference, and this, that's a, the best thing about having a gauge in the log is you can compare the differences and make changes to make it better. So the way I like to do that is with a graph, okay? In the graph section, you have different graphs. You have spark advance, spark retard, uh, fuel trims. And then what I do is I make one that I call AFR error. Okay, now to make this graph, right click here, graphs layout. And here's my AFR error. Okay, so basically, you add a graph and you're going to want to name it AFR error or just whatever you feel like naming it and the perimeter you want to use has to be made and I'll go into that in a second uh, kind of like with the adding the uh, math for the gauge itself you have to add the math for this error so what you'll do is you'll you probably have to close this out you go to your tools math perimeters and you're going to want to create a math I've already created one here but you'll go to user math and create one and this is what we have okay we have the name I named mine the AM wideband error notes I just put in our notes it's AM in, excuse me AEM AFR error from wideband by the EGR okay because I'm using my actual EGR sensor to transfer that data so you have your formula here 
the mathematics it uses. Then you have your PID number here, which is this is an EGR sensor. More mathematics stuff I really don't understand, honestly. And then you have another PID, which is your air fuel ratio commanded. That's the thing we set up here earlier. And then more math. So what it does, all this math here, is it basically takes your uh, actual air fuel ratio according to your gauge and does the math to what it's commanded and then comes up with the percentage of what the difference is. Okay? And it's a percentage of what needs to be added or what needs to be subtracted. So we'll close that back out. Uh, I'll put that in the notes also so that you can maybe have a better way to copy and paste it. I mean, I know I have a hard time putting everything in those brackets and everything else. My eyesight's a little bad, but <laughs> it gets frustrating sometimes. So anyways, you go back to your, your graphs layout. You the graph you created, AFR error. And you want to go to perimeter, and you're going to go down to the bottom here, user defined, and you just select that math that you created, input it, and you should have it right there. You want it to be in percent. Decimals, I use three. Uh, it's really up to you. Uh, cell hits, we'll go over in a minute. The shading, I put a high value of 20, I put red mid value zero low value negative 20 and i put green uh, that's just so that when you're lean it shows an actual red number and the leaner you are the darker it is and when you're rich it shows a green number same thing the richer you are the darker the color is okay now this area here we have column axis and you want to you want to select parameters engine speed which is your RPMs so you click on that you select engine speed uh, let's see here engine speed there it is easy does it so these numbers here are actually the RPM range and what you want to do is go to your scanner log or excuse me no 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 your edit log and find your VE table I happen to have mine pulled up right here okay now you want that range that's in the graph you're making to match this range that's in this VE table so what you do is you right click this corner and you go to column axis copy labels then you go back to your scanner and you'll paste those labels right here okay header cell factor 1000 now you go to your row axis and then you're going to input whatever your uh, parameter is uh, in my case I'm using a two bar map sensor uh, you may be using a one bar or a three bar but you just click on that find the parameter for your your map sensor it's under manifold manifold absolute pressure you can see this whole list of when it pop up there's mine you know, yours is maybe that one you may have a normal one just whatever yours is grab it put it in this area right here units you want to put kpa because that's what a map measures in uh header cell factor i have one and for these values again you go to your editor and you're going to want to grab these right here as you can see two bar map on mine goes from 15 up to 210 right click in the corner row axis copy labels go back to your scanner and put that information right here okay so that should be all set up you can close that out and essentially what you have here in your graph is you have a copycat or a duplicate of your VE table so as you're logging this information will be put in put into this graph and it's basically the graph matches your VE table uh, 
you have 15 210 kpa 0 0.4 to 8000 rpms so as you're scanning and i think i have my scan still running here you can see this blue area here is the actual scan and you follow that around it kind of moves around on its own those are areas that it's calculating where your fuel is off in other words i'll go back to the gauge here right here we were requesting a 14.68 afr we have a 14.9 so you go to your graph and it tells you right here that you're this percentage off okay you go back excuse me to the gauge let's go to some where we're making a little bit of power okay it's telling you you want an 11.57 and you have a 10.9 go to your graph it's telling you you just did about four percent too rich so you need to pull a little bit of fuel and it does it throughout the whole range so the best way to do this in my opinion i'm sure there's other guys who do it a lot different is i like to split this graph up right at 100 kpa and what i'll do is is i'll uh I'll, when i'm tuning i'll take this information from down here and i'll use it separately than what i would from everything that's above it uh, the reason is because this is all idle and cruise uh, park throttle and everything about from this point forward is wide open throttle and boost and your power uh, power band <clears throat> so what i like to do also is when you go into this afr error copy let's see here graphs layout when you go into it the cell hits that i kind of mentioned earlier when you increase it you kind of watch kind of watch over here to this to this right when you increase the cell hitch required say the 50 it appears like you lose data well you're really not you want to put this number in as you're scanning and what it is is it gives you a better average of what those uh, what those cells actually were so instead of working from each time that things hit it's going to work from 50 and give you it's just going to be a tighter average uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but it does. So, uh, a good a good starting point for doing your your cruise and your park throttle is at least 25. Just depending on how much you go drive around, uh, you can you can sneak up on a tune that way using the cell hits of 25. 50 is even better. Uh, you can see where it takes all the garbage out, and what I mean by that is go back to one. You have a lot of areas over here that are showing super rich or super lean and these are all d cell areas and chances are you're you're not that super rich or super lean there's, there's transition areas that uh even if you were it's really not going to matter so, but when as you notice as you take out and uh erase the cell hits those areas kind of disappear because this is where you're mainly driving at this area through here and what i like to do is, is just use that for my my part throttle uh cruising stuff of that nature light light duty light duty stuff and use that to tune with now whenever i'm going into a heavier uh wide open throttle this one i tend to try to work from this 100 kpa and up i set the cell hits lower the uh, reason is is because you're not going to spend a lot of time wide open throttle so you want to try to use every little bit of data you can get. Uh, I've all, I, sometimes I also do it at five, and you can see you even going going from from a one to five how much data you lose right there because, like I said, it, you know, again, you just you don't spend a lot of time here. You know, you can't. So it's one to five on the power band and 25 to 50 in your cruise, and you should get enough information that. That you can uh, you can straighten out tune pretty quickly. And the way to do that is, uh, for example, the way I do it. A lot of people do just highlight and copy the whole thing. The way I like to do it is going by uh, my AFR error, 
go back to the gauge layout. I'll go ahead and I'll set my cell cell hits to say 25. That drops these down to where they're they're more accurate. I'll select them in the in the range that they're in. Say to 100. Right click it. Copy with axis. Make sure you say with axis. That's this. That's that zone right there. Copy with axis. Go to this, the the uh, editor. Click on that corner. Right click it. Paste special. You can either do a multiply percent or a multiply by negative percent, which is half. Uh, basically, that that means if you if you're showing that you need a 10% fuel cut, it's only going to do five, and that keeps you from over over jumping your your uh, target. It kind of let you sneak up on a tune a little bit better if you're way off just do this one if you're getting closer do this one each time and you'll sneak up on the tune and you you won't overshoot it and when you do the paste special uh, and since you did it you copied and you copied by the uh, the actual boundaries it's only going to put here I'll do that paste special multiply you notice it's only putting the ones that you selected in there uh, that didn't work but anyways I don't want to save that That's this tune is already kind of different than that so whenever you get to uh, doing your power stuff 100 kp down uh, I go through this graphs layout and select let's just say one and then I'll grab all this information through here and I'll use it same thing copy with the axis go to this paste special multiply by whatever drops it in there and it only changes wherever you, you know 100 and up I always tune my 100 and up a little different than my, than my part throttle down uh, it's just something I like to do. So hopefully that's a that's a lot of rambling on my part, but hopefully that that uh, helps you out maybe and and kind of gives you a little better idea of uh, how you can use this wide band to actually to tune and you know it's it's fairly automated if you set your graph up. Your graph knows how much you need to add, how much you need to subtract, and uh, you, it's just a matter of copy pasting that information you can do it however you want it could be as simple as just copy and pasting your whole entire table each time uh, there's nothing wrong with that that's it, it's not the way I do it but there's obviously you know, nothing wrong with that I mean it's, it may work better who knows I don't but anyway so once again uh, I hope that helps somebody out and like I said before in my last video, and I'll say it again in this one, I don't know everything there is to know about this. I'm learning as I go. Uh, feel free to comment in the comments below. And uh, if you have tips for me, I'd love to have them. And hopefully I can help you in return. Uh, once again, thanks guys. Happy hot rodding. Stay safe.